Welcome, it's the Close the Deal Show. I'm your host, formerly incarcerated, Terrence McRae. Every week we bring you business information, tips, and insights from entrepreneurs, business professionals, and inspired individuals from the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond. The Close the Deal Show also features public announcements, Entrepreneur Week, and small business owners. And if you're looking for strategies to help you in business, or educate the public, then you're definitely in the right place. Thanks for joining us today. What we have is another exclusive episode of Mr. Bill Wealth, a.k.a. Jasper Smith. For all of you who don't know him, you will today. Our finance guru is here again to share some insight on a particular topic that some of you all may be dealing with in the first quarter of this year how to get a handle on debt welcome jasper smith to the close the deal show hey hey jasper Tim. what's up brother man all always, right welcome always back. good to be back man always absolutely. been absolutely been a little while man i see you uh making great strides with the show and uh happy to be back uh, on as a guest i'm glad to have you back so tell me um when you come up with this idea of helping people to manage their finances, mm -hmm. where does that come from? So part of it was from initially getting out of college and getting into the actual financial services industry and seeing, uh, it was working more so with investments and retirement starting out. But what I was noticing is that a lot of people were struggling with the basics. And so, you know, today's title was about how to get a handle on debt. And I actually had just uh, reposted this image about how uh, Americans were some $4 trillion in debt. Uh, it was a December 2018 um, reference. But again, if people are <laughs> drowning in debt, like how can we expect them to save money, invest, you know, retire comfortably? I mean, there's a lot of things we just can't do if debt and this debt burden is uh, existing in our lives. So what are some ways people can get a handle of their debt? First thing you got to do is you got to make a list. I think you have to write down everything that you owe, whether that's credit card, student loan, uh, a mortgage, whether you owe your friend $5. I mean, you literally need to sit down and write down everything that you owe because then you'll know how to prioritize everything and see what you can and cannot attack depending on you know your, your cash flow. Well, what if you're somebody who's living paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and they are in debt? All right, so <laughs> that's always a that's a tough one, man. And people ask that quite a bit. And so, I think your first priority is to figure out the income piece. I, I think you you can't pay anybody back if you don't have the money, right? I mean, that's that's the thing that, that a lot of people kind of forget is that we got to focus maybe more so on figuring out how we're going to generate that income, and whether that's starting a business or working for somebody or just you got to you got to get an income. You have to have something coming in because before we have the income, we, we can't even think about addressing the debt if we don't have any income coming into our pockets every month. So are you referring to, say, for instance, people with issues that um, college graduates and still dealing with school loans? Yeah, that's that's a big one, man. Honestly, unfortunately, our education system pushes people to incur all this debt, but then there's no guarantee of a job or an opportunity upon graduating. And, and depending on your major, there are going to be a lot more opportunities available uh, versus others where they know getting a, a bachelor's degree doesn't necessarily mean you're going to earn a lot. And so you may have taken out $100,000 in student loans, and now you're getting a job that's paying you 50000 a year. <laughs> so you're already starting behind the eight ball. And so a lot of people need to think about you know, if I do if I do decide to major in something that society won't pay me well or handsomely for some years, 
we got to get a little bit more creative on how we're funding our education. Now, I know formalized schooling isn't for everybody, but I think we got to get a little, again, more creative on how we go about trying to get funding for our education. And, and again, loans will always be there, Terrence, but so many people are starting out in debt and some may never get out of it. They literally may live or go their whole lives and never know what it feels like not to owe somebody some money. If you have a debt question, you can call in right now, 415-861-6648, and speak, Mr. Bill Wealth, about your debt question. My question, um, Mr. Wealth, is do you teach people how to develop a debt management plan? We do. So I've done them personally, you know, back in my days as a financial advisor. Um, I've done a lot of work through, you know, our organization, the Urban Financial Services Coalition. And so what we really try to do is, is first we got to meet people where they are, Terrence. Like I, I know people, they have certain feelings towards the debt and it cripples a lot of us. It causes a lot of stress in people's lives, but we help them kind of shape it and form it and just get them comfortable with their situation. And then from there saying, if we've taking this inventory and now you fully understand what we got to do it's all about charting out this this plan and saying you know you might not be able to do this in three months you might not be able to do it in six months but maybe there are some small steps we can take so that way we see progress after three months after six months and then let's do another update in a year and then let's see if what we're discussing is actually helpful but also to Terrence I'll be honest with you some people aren't ready some people want the success without doing the work and success only becomes <laughs> success only comes before work in the dictionary. It's the only time you're going to see that happen. So how do you mentally prepare it? <sighs> Tell a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make you do it. Like, I think it's, it's so hard because when, when we're doing these workshops for, for groups of people, you can see the stress in their face. I mean, you can see it's eating them alive, literally, in some regards, and it's causing a lot of stress. And so the question I pose to people is, how much more can you take before you break? Like, don't you get tired of living this life? Don't you get tired of not being able to do what you want to do because this debt is holding you back? At some point, it's just got to get so uncomfortable where you feel like my only option is to change my way of thinking and change the way I'm taking action. But I can't make people do it, Terrence. All we can do is keep trying to, you know, things like we're doing now. We're, we're sharing all this information with the world. There's somebody watching right now who's struggling. I guarantee they won't call in. They won't reach out to you. They won't call me. And they'll sit there and just fester in this life. They'll sit in the pot. The pot's boiling hot. And they will just sit there and keep getting burned. So if you're overlooking this topic as well as this particular subject matter you can still chime in and call at 415-861-6648 and ask mr bill wealth a specific question in regarding to debt you don't have to say that it's you but you do have mm -hmm. a question mm -hmm. how can someone who's broke pay off their debt They got to get a job, got to have some income. And depending on what type of debt it is, so we, we, there are some ways, and, and let's say it's something maybe credit related and they're trying to uh, relieve some of that tension. There is some options where you can sometimes dispute some fraudulent things that may be on or being reported about you from a credit standpoint. So sometimes people who may not have the means to kind of address it, there may be some ways you can dispute some things to maybe get some things removed off of your report. Um, there's also maybe you don't have a lot of money, but um, you can settle some debts as well. It, it, it all depends. You know, it just you got to take a look to see how much you owe. And if the the um, if the creditor is willing to negotiate, sometimes they may not ask for full price. So you can sometimes get a discount, like maybe 60, 70 percent off or 50 percent. Or sometimes you can set up payment payment schedules. You know, they, they may be willing to work with you. They might not. But I think people have to address it and maybe reach out and get in touch with some of their creditors because the creditor's job is literally just to collect that money from you. You borrow some money at some point and now you're obligated to pay it back. And so people can try to negotiate and work on things. Maybe they can dispute some things. And, you know, the other option, some people fly out just go into hiding. <laughs> 
people just owe money and they may never try to pay it back. And there are certain things you can do where there's there's a seven year waiting period for certain debts. And sometimes they will fall off and creditors won't report them after a seven year period. Because, again, if they can't get in touch with you, they can't collect the money. So I do have some people who opt for that option where they don't have any income. And they will flat out just avoid creditors for as long as they can. I don't like that option, but I think if you don't have any income and you're really struggling, sometimes it's good to kind of get missing. So what are those particular um, options for that seven-year period? Well, the idea is if I'm trying to collect money from you, Terrence, I'm going to hopefully when I got your file, there's, well, I'm not hopeful. I know when I got your file, there's probably a phone number, an address, your name, how much you owed and what you took it out for, right? So I'm going to try to call you. If there's an address, I might be sending you some letters. So sometimes people just would just <laughs> throw the letters away. They won't answer the phone. Um, I have <laughs> I had a client one time where she literally just wouldn't answer her phone. I mean, she was so nervous about bill collectors calling her that she just stopped answering her phone. Now, she ended up changing a number at some point, um, but she played the waiting game because life, life kind of happened to her. It was pretty bad. So she didn't have the income. So she, she, she played the waiting game. Now... It didn't work out completely in her favor because fast forward, some of the creditors and collectors went away, but there's still people who are going to try to find you and collect that money. So playing the waiting game is one thing, but I, I, I try to encourage people to address it as opposed to avoiding their problems. So how can some low income mm -hmm. remove their debt? So let's say if you have a little bit of money, again, I think you can always try to negotiate and settle some debts if, if that's an option. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, another way that people try to do this sometimes is they, de they declare bankruptcy. It's I like bankruptcy as a last ditch option. Like, let's say, you know, for sure you don't have the income and you won't have it anytime soon. Bankruptcy could be an option. I do want that to be the last resort for somebody to do that. Most bankruptcy attorneys um, that I've spoken with in the past, they'll give somebody a free consultation and then they'll show them exactly how much it'll cost for them to file the bankruptcy. So, again, you're still having to pay some money. To, to get it done, but um, a last resort option could be filing for bankruptcy. Um, there's also other companies out there where they do debt consolidation, and so they can look at your situation, and instead of you having to pay five or six different creditors, maybe we can lump that all into one or two different payments, right? And so that could be a way to simplify your life. So now you were looking at six different debts. Now there's just one payment that you make. Um, some people also, if their credit is decent, can do like personal loans. So there's a lot of companies that will do like personal loans for you. And again, their whole thing is, why well, pay all these people when you can just make one payment? Um, sometimes it's a little more favorable from an interest rate standpoint, but you really got to kind of do your research and figure out, does consolidating make the most sense? But there's some options out there for people. So how many people have you dealt with in those type of financial situations? Hundreds. Um, hundreds. Uh, literally, I worked with uh, a wonderful organization, Operation Hope, where actually I did credit counseling for about two years. And you're talking, we did a, a workshop. It was free <laughs> every month. You're talking 30 to 40 people every month. And I did that for two years straight. We did one on one counseling. It was free. And a lot of people, unfortunately, Terrence, didn't come to their free appointments. It hurt my heart. They would come to the workshop, get the information, and then not come up ever again. They would never show up. And the people who didn't show up, you want to know what happened to them? What happened? Their credit stayed jacked up. <laughs> Their credit just, it, they, they thought that they didn't need me. They didn't need Operation Hope. They didn't need somebody to help. If you are empowered and you know you can do the work yourself, by all means, go out there and do it. The information is on the internet. You can do a lot of things on your own. But for the overwhelming majority of people, they need a helping hand. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help. The people who stayed in touch with me, who utilize their free credit counseling for a year. You want to know what happened to them? What happened? Credit score went up. They didn't work any magic. Literally, they sat through the workshop. We did that inventory, took it to kind of inventory of where they were in life. And all we did was check in every month. That was it. Them just showing up told me they were serious. Because a lot of people out here, they just aren't serious already. And that's okay. Because time doesn't wait. for It's going to keep moving. And you, you're going to stay in your situation until you decide to do something different. So if people, again, if they're willing to take that step to, to really change their life, then it may re result in them having to go ask for help. They need to get some education. 
you know, a lot of last time I checked, man, people who are struggling, they tend to still have cell phones, Terrence, smartphones. <laughs> Let me tell you what they're doing. They're not looking up information about how to fix their credit. They're, they're too busy being social and having fun and liking photos and, and looking at people's stories. A lot of free information out there, but a lot of people tend to not take advantage of the free resources. So Operation Hope was free information. Once a month, credit workshop. They have them all across the country, man. It was it hurt my heart to see the the numbers of people attend the workshop and then the the lack of people who came for their one on one appointments. Uh, and we've done the same thing with the Urban Financial Services Coalition. We, we've partnered up with Operation Hope in the past. Uh, we've done our own standalone. We've hit churches, community groups. We've done schools. You name it, man. I have tried and other members as well have tried to help people. I want to be of service, but I can't want it more than you do. And that's the, the toughest part about this whole financial piece and dealing with debt is that some people are so stuck in their situation, they can't pull themselves out. And I can't come in and save them. So you mean to tell me the information and the schooling that you've acquired, you want to give it back? All the time. Shouldn't you be compensated for it? Yeah, of course. And there, and there are a ton of organizations who... They receive compensation. They receive donors. They, um, you know, a lot of people donate to organizations to help support those causes. And so, generally, if you're seeing something that's a free service, usually there's somebody who's funding that effort. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? There are a lot of people who want to do well and do good, but also people have lives. So we can't sit here and try to help everybody, Terrence. If we can't eat, we got goals. Me and you had dreams. We have debts we got to pay down. We have savings we want to do. We have investments we want to make. So I think it's keeping in mind that I think you can do good and do well for people. But what I've learned is that people just don't value the free stuff. Like, again, I guarantee you after this episode, somebody's going to watch it. I guarantee somebody's seen it. I've given them a few gems to help them address or get a handle on their debt. And I guarantee they won't call you, me, or maybe do anything in the next three to six months just because the time isn't right. They'll find some excuse not to take that step forward. Well, Mr. Jasper is going to give you several more jewels. One of the jewels that I would like to know is how can one reduce their debt quickly? You got to get aggressive. So there, there's two kind of schools of thought to this, Terrence. You have to, there's the debt snowball technique where what people will do is you focus on the smallest debt and you eliminate it. Excuse me. Once that smallest debt is eliminated, you don't go spend that money on something else. You add that first payment to the second debt that you have. So essentially you're making two payments on the second debt. Now, once the second debt is paid off and let's say you had debt number three, now you are essentially adding two payments on top of the third payment that you're already making. So now that debt gets missing a lot quicker. So the debt snowball technique is popular everywhere. People have heard about it. But again, all you're doing is focus on the smallest debt and you work your way up to the larger debt. Now, that's one way. The other way is called, I've heard some people call it the debt avalanche <laughs> to where you focus on the debt with the largest interest rate. Because mathematically, the longer you have that outstanding, you're paying more in interest for the duration of that, that loan or debt or what have you. So some people will say, well, focus on the, the debt with the highest interest rate. And get rid of that one as soon as you can. You know, paying more than the minimum, doubling up on payments. But whatever you do, the quicker you can get rid of high interest rate types of debt, that saves you a lot more money in the long run. So, again, the recap, the debt snowball technique, focusing on the smallest debt and work your way up to the larger one. Because that option helps you emotionally, makes you feel good. But then the debt avalanche to where you're saying, you know what, I'm going to focus on the debt with the highest interest rate because that's costing me more the longer I have it outstanding. But what if someone has a family and they're in debt and they have a household mm -hmm. of two to three kids mm -hmm. as well as the parents? How do they focus on mm. that highest interest rate? That's a great question. So bringing a family. So if, if, if there's a family involved and mm -hmm. I'm assuming, let's say it's husband, wife um, or let's just say, excuse me, a couple. Right. Uh, there's a couple and you have to almost sit down and prioritize all of your debts collectively. So it can't just be all of your debts and all of mine. It's got to say, well, here's what we both have collectively in this household. Now let's put them up on a chart and see which ones can we reasonably get done in a short period of time. Maybe it's two debts off of your list. Maybe it's one off of my list. So people got to have that dialogue. And that's what we're not doing. Like We're just not having the discussion. We want all these answers and solutions and we want the success. But 
we haven't even had the conversation, Terrence. A lot of people in their house, I've, I've asked this question to clients I've had. I've always asked, have you had this conversation with your significant other? 80% of the people haven't. And yet they're asking me for answers. I'm like, talk to the person you live with. I'm sure they might be concerned about your well-being as well. Like, I'm sure that's the case. People aren't having this discussion. So we got to get a little bit more comfortable just talking about our financial issues. Well, there you have it. Mr. Bill Wealth, not only sharing his tips, but providing you new ideas and strategies to work on your debt. So how can you handle your debt? Reach out to Mr. Bill Wealth and he will tell you. Got that right. I look forward to it. Okay. <laughs> Where can they find you at? Uh, they can find me on the socials. I've been uh, pretty heavy on Instagram recently, so it's Mr. Underscore Build Wealth. Uh, also, uh, the have a, a financial education effort called the Build Wealth Movement, so that's at the Build Wealth Movement. Uh, send me a DM, you know, like a photo, like a, I post a lot of information, so, you know, don't know who's seeing it, but again, you know, you can find me on Instagram. Thank you for coming on the show. Very welcome, sir. Before we close this deal, guarantee if you have your own small business, go to BAVC and look up Carmen Bennett. She can teach you how to market your business on social media. You can look Karma up and take one of her classes here in San Francisco locally at BAVC. If you have suggestions, questions, or even want to apply to be a guest on the show, visit us at www.theclosingdealshow.com. San Francisco Bay Area viewers, you can find us every Monday night at 8.30 p.m. on Cable Comcast Channel 29. Okay, worldwide on YouTube, please subscribe and like and comment on your favorite episode. Take good care, everyone. Don't forget, find the right connection and close the deal. So remember, level up. Got nothing against your love, but I gotta level up.